Hello and welcome to Miniature Adventures. I'm Big Lee and this week I want to ask, have you planned for what's going to happen to your collection when you're no longer here? So this week's video, Morbid As It Is, was actually inspired by a conversation I had with somebody at Partisan a few weeks ago. Um, and basically he just said, had I ever thought about what I was going to do with my collection um, when I'm no longer around? <laughs> Um, and I have actually done a video on this before, so um, forgive me if some of you have seen some of this before, um, but it's a, a, a subject worth revisiting, I think. You know, our disposal of our collections can be a huge problem, a massive task for those left behind us, and it's not necessarily something that has to wait until we've uh, shuffled off this mortal coil. It may be something that we decide to do because of change in circumstances, age circumstances, other things. Um, uh, and it's something that's worth having a, a very brief think of, I think, because you know I have known a few friends who have had to dispose of other people's collections, and it's turned into a massive, gargantuan, life-consuming task for them. And it's not even their stuff they're trying to dispose of, but they feel responsible for doing so in a in the right manner. So I think it's something that you know if you've got a, a huge collection. It's behoving on you, on us, on all of us, to, to just give a little bit of thought and leave some clear instructions for people uh, on how to dispose of our collection when we're no longer here to enjoy it. And I think it's worth starting off by saying, whatever plan you have, um, even if it's next to no plan, <laughs> it's no good if you don't tell anyone. So you do need to let people know what it is you want to happen with your stuff. Um, you know, don't me wrong. I'm not going anywhere, so this is this is. I'm not planning on this anytime soon. But I do have a plan and a set of tentative instructions for people in case I got get run over by a bus or drop down dead tomorrow. At least the family will know what to do with my stuff um, and hopefully reduce the stress for them. Um, but also, I know. You know, I mean, I don't believe in an afterlife, but you know, if I did, I'd like to think that my collection is going to go on and be used and enjoyed by somebody else. So, um, you know, I have left instructions on how my stuff should be disposed of. Um, so it's important that you do let your family know what your plans are. Make them aware of what figures in your collection are worth something. That they're not just toys. Um, and we're not just talking about the hours you've poured into them. Um, but some of the figures may actually be collectible. So, you know, it's worth highlighting those particular collections or those particular armies that you've got. Or sets of books and things like that that, that are, are particularly valuable and ought to be sold uh, to raise a bit of money for whatever purpose. Whether that's for your family to enjoy or um, for your favourite charity or to give to your club or whatever it might be. Um, uh, and, you know, and, and I emphasise... You need to emphasise the love that's gone into your collection, you know, the, the, the work that you've done to get this stuff where you've got it to. Um, and, and, the, and an anecdote that I've used before and I, and I, I, is that I, I, for many years I've done some family history research. Um, I used to be, used to be a big passion of mine, um, less so in recent years, but I've still got all, the, all my research and, and so on. And in the process, I came across a family member who gave me this anecdote about how one of their relatives had done loads of family history research, and when they died, their family didn't realise what all this stuff was, and it all got scooped up and skipped. You know, a, a lifetime's worth of research uh, and collecting pieces of data, and, and all of it had been lost. Um, because the people left behind just didn't appreciate or understand the value of this to other members of the family or indeed to themselves until it was too late and once it's gone it's gone. Now one of the key things to do um, I think um, and this this is a good thing to do at any time but particularly in, with this sort of planning is to be organised you know to have your stuff organised and coherent uh, so that Whoever ends up having to go through it um, can do so in an easy and relatively stress-free manner. I've, I've helped clear family members' homes when they've passed away. And, you know, it's, it's not a pleasant experience. It can be upsetting, it's overwhelming, it's stressful. And who wants to put that onto their family members when they're gone? Um, you know, uh, so, you know, the, the more organised the collection is, the easier it will be 
for those people that end up having to deal with it. Your organisation could just be having a clear list of what you've got and where it should go. Um, having stuff that you have got clearly labelled so that they can, you know, oh, that box has got that in, oh, and that's where it's going to go because it's on the list. Something as simple as that, you know, just a list of an inventory, if you like, of what you've got and who you want it to go to or where you want it disposed of. Um, you know, that would make life so much easier for whoever has to deal with your collection. Now, I regularly meet pensioners in my line of work and who, who have usually spent years downsizing, downsizing their lives in readiness for their own passing. Um, and I, 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 I'm both in awe of their calm preparedness and also in horror <laughs> of the fact that they've spent the last 30 years of their lives getting ready for something in anticipation of it happening. Um, and then it doesn't happen for another 30 years. My nan was a classic example. She was predicting her own death for a good 25 years before it actually happened. Um, and, and, you know, what a way to spend your final years. Um, you know, personally, I'm planning on immortality and that's going to be my attitude. Um, but that doesn't mean to say I ain't going to organise stuff and try and uh, perhaps rationalise my collection at some point in the future. Certainly, uh, there's lots of books and stuff in here that could go to a better home and I would probably get quite a lot of enjoyment out of seeing it go to a better home before I pop my clogs um, and then just leave a small core collection of stuff that I'm playing with hopefully right up to the last one die with a set of dice in my hands um, uh, and you know that core collection that's left neatly organised and well sorted and so that the family know exactly what's going to happen to it I mean I, I reiterate right Playing a complex hobby is good for the mind, it keeps us alert, um, or at least hopefully most of the time keeps us alert. Um, and so, you know, I, I'm not for a minute advocating that any of you decide when you get to like 60, 70 that you decide, right, that's it, I'm packing it up because I could drop dead at any moment. You know, I'm definitely not advocating that. Um, you know, keeping our hobby going and keeping that keeps us going uh, gives us something to, to focus on and keeps us alive, you know. Um, again, another anecdote, family member that worked his entire life um, and within two months of retiring, he did because he had nothing else in his life other than his work. Um, and I, I genuinely, I think he died of boredom. Um, and, you know, what a terrible way to end your life. Um, so I'm planning on keeping my hobby going for as long as possible. But I don't want to be worrying about what might happen to my favourite toys, um, you know, if I was to suddenly not be around to, to say what's going to happen to them. Um, so, you know, again, going back to the, the list is important, having it well organised and documented so that those that are sorting your gear out can do so according to your own wishes. You do a will for everything else, you know, the, the house and the you know, valuables, and well, these are our valuables. So I think that they should be, if not included in the will, certainly included in um, some supplementary documentation that the family know about and know where to find. Again, there's no point having a will or a set of instructions if you've ever hidden it. So make sure that the family know that you have got a set of instructions and where to find them so that they can carry out your wishes. So with respect to a will, obviously a will is there to try and help you sort out the valuable stuff. Also, a lot of our collection is going to be valuable, certainly have a, a resale value of some kind. And, and, you know, some of us may have collections of really uh, rare models that would command quite a good price. And that's money that can be given back. Like I say, you could give them uh, that money could go back into your family or be given to a charity or you could uh, bequeath stuff that you particularly uh, uh, love and, and want to make sure stays being used. You could bequeath it to friends, give it to a club. You know, if you've got, if you're part of a club, make sure that there's something there for the newbies to play with, you know, so that your stuff has a life after you do. Um, some stuff may be so good that it should be d donated to a museum. You know, just because they're our toys and we play with them doesn't mean that they wouldn't be of interest to a military history museum, for instance. Um, and, you know, uh, you could leave instructions for certain items to be auctioned because you know that they'd raise, get a good price on the likes of eBay or other auction type sites. So, like I say, uh, we know our collections better than our family ever will. Um, uh, so leave the instructions so that they know how to get the most out of it once you've gone. 
Right, so I appreciate that today's video is a little bit morbid, but as I say, it was a question that was raised uh, in conversation with someone and, and they said that they'd really like to see a video on it. And although I have covered this topic before, some time ago, way back in fact when I started the channel uh, properly back during COVID, um, uh, yeah, I did think it was a subject that's perhaps worth revisiting, particularly in light of that particular conversation. But of course, as usual, I'm going to turn it around and ask you, do you have any plans? Um, you know, do you have a, a, a an inventory, if you like, of your stuff and instructions on how you would like stuff to be disposed of? Have you had conversations with family or your friends or your gaming buddies about what you would like to happen with collections? Um, you know, all of us want to live forever, but sadly, that's impossible. And we've all lot know a gamer or two in our groups, you know, that, that has passed on before their time. Um, and you know the last thing we want to know, uh, we, any of us I think uh, would like to think is that our, our collections are going to go on and have a, another life we certainly wouldn't want to think of them being tossed um, or taken down a charity shop because no one knows really what they're, they're worth or what you want to happen to them so you know what plans have you got have you done had this sort of think about your collection you know are, are you doing that because you're getting on <laughs> uh, or are you just that sort of organized person how young is too young to be doing this sort of inventory uh, with your collections um you know i'd love to hear from you as always you know what your thoughts on this subject um you know, what plans have you made and so on so as always if you found today's i won't say like but if you've found today's uh, video interesting please like subscribe and share and of course if you want to keep up to date with my videos please tap the bell notification icon so until next week stay safe keep gaming stay healthy and of course keep rolling high